you know don't get held down by failures you learn and you move forward and my advice to you today children today is identify trends ride the wave the wave will push you forward today the entire healthcare system is focused on cure but i think we should be focused on preventive Welcome everyone to uh, another edition of uh, Inspirational Indians uh, by Sarga Sambad uh, which is an initiative by the Agastya Foundation so often we try and bring you a new story a new person that you know has truly done something inspiring for the kids of Agastya to learn from to get inspired by uh, to help spark their curiosity which is something that you know we really strive to do and uh, we have with us today someone that honestly doesn't need much introduction but uh, is truly a captain of industry i would say as one of the architects uh, of as the co-founder of infosys he was really one of the architects of india's it revolution and you know by extension uh, the indian economy's growth story i would say over the past 3 uh, or maybe 4 decades so uh, welcome uh, chris gopal krishnan it is wonderful to have you here thank you thank you and uh, i really look forward to uh, to hearing more about your story and understanding you know how you uh, how you came to where you were sure uh, and uh, i've known agastya for uh, many years now and what uh, agastya does uh, to promote um, uh, curiosity to promote uh, a scientific temper uh, in students is uh, i think what is required in today's world so you know if we go back to the beginning uh, you know to your early life i think i'd be interested to know what part did creativity and innovation play in your journey as and how at what age were you introduced to the very idea of how in, you know important it could be or uh, was there someone that inspired you to uh, you know become of that mindset say i grew up in trivandrum uh, southern part of india you know it's it's the capital city of it's capital city of kerala what was interesting uh, about uh, tiruvananthapuram is that um, it had uh, uh, best of the libraries uh, you know we had the british council library we had the uh, university library the public library in those days ussr uh, their information center and the us information center usic or something like that is called and all of these places uh, could be traversed just by it taking a cycle right right uh, so that's one and i took full advantage of that books were uh, a uh, part of my life uh, from early on and it continues to be part of my life uh, even today second um, at school i was uh, really interested in science um, less so maths but i was very curious about science experiments in science etc we had some of the very good teachers in science and and i used to look forward to the lab uh, sessions and then i tried to replicate some of them at home try to do some Sorry, curiosity and innovation uh, play a role you know at the individual level company level and at the nation level and you know, we speak to a lot of people who like yourself have you know succeeded and a lot of them say that you know from a very early age they had a vision for their future they you know had something that they had it may not have been the exact place they ended up but there was definitely a, a kind of a, a goal post that they could see and they were kind of working towards it was that true uh, in your case as well not really um see those were not the days of internet etc uh, those were also the days when uh, you know you listen to your parents and uh, try and meet their expectations of um, you know your career etc so my parents uh, felt i should become a doctor because in our family there were engineers there were um, you know uh, people who were working for banks etc but there was no doctor so my parents wanted me to become a doctor and unfortunately of course um, i did not get admission again in those days there are no 
common entrance examination. So I just applied to one medical college, which was there in my city. And uh, I did not get through. And that kind of uh, changed uh, my career because I then uh, decided that I'm not going to become junior to my batchmates. So I decided to switch to BSc Physics. From BSc Physics, I did M MSc Physics. During my MSc days, I got introduced to computers, took a liking to that, and did a master's in computer science. So, you know, really I've, I've changed my path twice from on track to an MBBS, then on track to maybe a PhD in physics and switch to computer science. And so how would you say overall, you know, your education shaped the journey you ended on? Was there any, I mean, in this case, of course, it wasn't even the starting point, right? You were looking at physics and then at some point you pivoted yeah, but, almost to... Yeah, but what uh, is the common thread is learning um, the basic sciences, learning to learn, you know, reading a lot. Um, and I would not just look at my lessons or what is required for school or college. I would um, read a lot about uh, many other subjects. And that's how I got uh, interested in computer science. And I was lucky that I got a seat in the master's in computer science at IIT Madras. Curiosity about uh, what is um, emerging, what is new, I think uh, is the common thread all through. And at your at that level, you know, who inspired, I mean, other than your parents, of course, but who were your inspirations, uh, you know, that you looked up to and said, well, I would like to become that, uh, that person? So, uh, you know, at different stages in life, you have different uh, people who inspired you. So after my uh, pre-degree, I was actually devastated because till then I was a fantastic student, you know, 25th rank in the state and uh, not getting admission to MBBS uh, kind of devastated me. And I, I had to change path, right? Uh, when I took BSc Physics, I had to take maths all over again. Mm -hmm. And I had not studied maths in the pre-degree. Because, you know, in those days, there is something called second group, which is physics, chemistry, biology, no maths. But I had to redo maths. And so I went for tuition to make up for uh, that. And, and fortunately, I got somebody who was truly inspirational. You know, a chain smoker, uh, you know, a tough teacher, but um, very compassionate. And uh, he kept on uh, motivating me, saying that this is not the end of the world. There's uh, so many opportunities in this world. And just focus on what you need to do and rest will fall in place. Luckily, it worked because um, I got admission to IIT Madras for doing an MSc Physics. And uh, that's where I then switched to computer science. So uh, every stage and uh, you know, later on when Infosys was founded, we all followed uh, Narayan Murthy when he said, uh, you know, I'm going to start a business. Would you like to join me? You know, there was no hesitation, no second thought. We said, you know, I said, yes, I I'm going to join Infosys. So, you know, you know, today, for example, if you look at philanthropy, I'm inspired by what Bill Gates does. Mm -hmm. So at every stage, uh, you get inspired by different people. In fact, that was going to be my next, you know, is, is the start of your career, how it kind of uh, shaped up as in where, you know, there is, of course, we read about uh, this idea that, yes, Narayan Murthy, I think, was slightly older and had this vision for what he wanted to do. And a lot of you, you know, bought into that vision and, you know, uh, trusted that he, you know, had, uh, had it right. And of course, you know, that did prove. But how did that initially start? I mean, what were you do? I mean, you were doing your course, I suppose, in uh, in MSc uh, in, in computers, I suppose, right place at the right time in a way. But uh, how did that pan out? Because I, I was looking for a more kind of informal story, and I, I only kept hearing, you know, the, ba the the basic stuff which everyone knows. So I said, okay, maybe I'll check with you. So um, an accidental meeting with Professor Mahabala during my MSc physics days actually gave me an opportunity to learned a little bit of um, programming, and then uh, applied for MTech Computer Science. Uh, I joined uh, the MTech program, and Professor Mahabala at that point was the head of department. Since um, I liked computers, see computers, one interesting, interesting observation is that, um, you know, it's all about problem solving. You know, when you write a program, when you write code, when you, you know, use a computer, it's always to solve a problem. And you get immediate uh, result. Yeah. Right. You know whether your program is going to work or not going to work. So you immediately get the satisfaction of having done something, finished something, 
solve something. Um, so if you, if you are a problem solver, you know, this is actually the best field. Mm -hmm. uh, at that point, I didn't truly realize, but, you know, I was at the right place at the right time because, you know, I passed out in 79, 78 is when uh, Apple introduced the personal computer. The IBM PC came out in 1981 when Infosys was started. World was looking at an explosive growth of software driven computer industry. Mm -hmm. Right till then, it was hardware driven, and the dominating companies were hardware companies. But from 1981 onwards, it was dominated by software companies. And our um, thesis for starting Infosys was that there will be explosive need for software, and we would develop that software sitting here in India. You know, that was the thesis. Uh, 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 for founding Infosys. Yeah, so in yeah. some sense, we were at the right place at the right time. I, I personally never thought that this will become big or, uh, you know, it'll, it'll reach where it has reached. But um, I was enjoying what I was doing. And if um, the business didn't work out, the fallback option was to get a job somewhere else, right? So I was confident that I would get a job somewhere else if this didn't work out. Luckily, you know, it all worked out. So you said, I mean, 81, I think Infosys was, uh, was founded, uh, which coincided with the, uh, with the IBM uh, launch, I suppose. At what point did you all just sort of look at each other and said, I think this is going to be, you know, quite big, as in, was, it, uh, was there a kind of aha moment where you just uh, realized, you know, what it could be? Because, uh, you know. That's 20 years later. Uh, because okay. <laughs> the first 10 years was survival as a company, staying together, you know, hand to mouth. There was no uh, venture funding, so it was all bootstrapped. And the next 20 years, 91 to 2000, when the Y2 came, uh, gave us a um, real um, accelerated growth opportunity. Y2K followed by the internet bubble, the telecom bubble, and things like that. So till uh, 1999, when we listed on NASDAQ, uh, we were not very clear that uh, this is going to be big. But after that, we started growing really fast. So in 1999, our income was about 125 million, if I remember right. And uh, by 2004, we had crossed a billion dollars in revenue, right? So in about four or five years, you know, we went from, you know, grew 10 times mm -hmm. in that period. So... That's when we realized that uh, this has, um, you know, this is something that's going to grow very big. But we had laid the foundation in 1991, you know, that decade, we had yeah. laid the foundation of um, uh, creating a, a scalable enterprise, creating an industry. You know, NASCAM was founded in 89 or 88. So creating an industry, uh, branding uh, India as the destination for software. Yeah. So, you know, we built a company, we built an industry, we built a country uh, as a destination for uh, uh, digital services. That's when we realized. So uh, the result of all that is, um, you know, the fast growth when the opportunity came. And, and that's when we realized. So when we hit the first billion dollars, we realized that this could be really, really big. And today, of course, the industry is $300 billion, exports is $200 billion. So we have come a long way. 1993, the entire industry was $150 million, right? So you can think about, uh, you know, 20, 30 years, right? 30 yeah. years, it has grown from $150 million to $300 billion. So, I mean, there's an element of perseverance there, which I think maybe even lacking in today's, uh, you know, kind of unicorn culture where you're just very quickly trying to, you know, jump from one thing. So what do you tell yourselves or what would you tell, you know, again, Agastya's kids are quite young, but I guess any project that you take up has an element of uh, persistence, has an element of, you know, you have to wait for the results and, you know, uh, you know be patient that they will, uh, you know, materialize. So what do you tell, you know, children, for example, where you say, okay, how, how do you mentally prepare for that? Because we do tend to get impatient sometimes. Yeah, being impatient is okay, but building something successful, something that's lasting, something will have an impact, it takes time and effort, requires focus, um, requires you to actually take care of all the mundane basic stuff so that you can concentrate on, you know, the difficult things and continuously set new goals, continues to 
you know, conquer these and as you reach these goals, set even higher goals and continue the journey. It's a journey which has no destination. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like uh, if you, you know, become first in the school, then you need to look at first in the district, then you need to look at first in the state, then you look yeah. at first in the country, things like that, right? Uh, uh, you know, when you reach one pinnacle, then the next uh, pinnacle is ahead of you and then you need to think about how do you conquer that right so this is an this is a never ending quest and and that's how i would uh, you know advise uh, students to look at never think about you know you have arrived think about uh, you know what is next for you to achieve and that's how i would um, look at uh, life and that's how i would look at career that's how i would look at uh, you know, every exam gives you the license for the next exam. But were you having you were having fun at the same time, uh, or was it? No, fun happens always, right? You you work with uh, people you respect. You work with people you like to work with, have fun uh, with. You know, you have family. You know, the, the, there is no separation. You know, there, there is nothing which says that. Um, you know, this is work, this is uh, social life, this is family life, and this is fun, etc. When um, you're working, when you like what you're doing, it's fun. And that's how I would advise uh, students to think about uh, these things. And stay focused. So when you are working on a problem or something like that, just focus on that. When you're playing with family or playing with your friends, just focus on that and enjoy that moment mm -hmm. and live for that moment. And that's what I've, what has worked for me. I do many, many things. And every time people ask me, how are you able to focus on so many different things? It's just that when I do something, I just fully focus on that one thing. So I have one more question for you on career, which is specific to emphasis. And then, uh, you know, the third part was basically your current, uh, you know, forays into philanthropy, et cetera. And that is someone had asked, you know, what were some of the key failures that you learned from, you know, during uh, building the organization? And luckily for me, failure happened early on. And, uh, uh, you know, it, uh, it actually played out well because I'm, you know, where I am today because of uh, that failure in some sense. Having said that, uh, there have been failures along the way. Afterwards, of course, it's all tied to Infosys, you know, the, from 81 to 2014, my life revolved around just Infosys. And we can't really separate uh, my success or failure from Infosys success or failure. You know, we had a, a hardware startup, which I was actually in charge of at Infosys. Uh, pretty soon we reali realized that uh, doing a hardware startup in India is very difficult. Mm -hmm. There is no money, there's no customer. In fact, our customer was government and was the most difficult customer. So we actually exited that business. We sold that business and exited that. Uh, we lost one our largest customer because we couldn't agree on a contract in 1994. Mm -hmm. So there have been um, you know, failures along the way. As soon as I became the CEO in 2007, 2007 you know, the, the global financial crisis happened course, in 2008, yeah. right? We were growing uh, nicely at 36 percentage annually. And suddenly the growth rate plummeted to 11% and 3% after that. And to recover from that, uh, to get back to about 36%, and that's where we doubled the revenue in the four years I was in CEO, was uh, again, a, a quite a satisfying achievement. So you, you know, don't get held down by failures. You learn and you move forward. Hopefully, you know, it affects uh, less number of people or you try to make best use of the situation so again coming back to 2008 you know since we had grown 36 percent we recruited or we made offers for 25,000 students to join us and then the entire world collapsed all around us growth rate plummeted and we honored all the offers we made little adjustment to the joining dates and we extended the training period for almost six months to eight months. So we decided that we will absorb that cost. We will train them on multiple technologies and things like that. And uh, that worked out when the growth picked up again. That also worked out because, you know, the brand equity that we built among students saying, you know, this is a company that you can trust and they will, they will honor their offers and things like that. 
So you take advantage, you take small hits um, along the way, but you take advantage and think about the long term, think about the ultimate goal and, and go forward. So that's how I would look at uh, failures. Failures are opportunities to learn. And if there are losses, try and uh, minimize the loss, try to think about how we can uh, maybe even make use of those opportunities to change the trajectory. Thank you. And uh, so now, you know, I just want to get to the, the last section, which is, you know, after emphasis. Uh, so one is, of course, something that I know is very close to your heart, which is healthcare. Can you let us know, you know, why is it your focus? I mean, where, what areas are you really passionate about and uh, what do you hope to see and achieve and, uh, you know, see happen over the next number of years? See, after I stepped down from Infosys, I had to reinvent myself because my life revolved around Infosys and, uh, you know, it was all about uh, success of Infosys, etc. What Infosys as a platform allowed me to do. But after I stepped down, I had to reinvent myself. I said, I'll focus on research, innovation, and entrepreneurship, supporting individuals, supporting small companies, and trying to you know, create an impact through them. I decided that I'm not going to compete with Infosys, so will not be in uh, IT per se, mm. or in computers per se. I focused on healthcare. That was also, in some sense, um, going back to what my parents wanted right, uh, to become a doctor and, yeah. you know, uh, go back to healthcare, right? So in, in some sense, uh, you know, it's like coming full circle, <laughs> uh, though, you know, at that point, both my parents were, you know, mother and father were, you know, part passed away. But in some sense, that was my way of saying, let me try and uh, see whether I can make an impact in healthcare. Mm -hmm. But having chosen healthcare, I wanted to be at the cutting edge because it's about research, innovation, et cetera, yeah. right? So when I look around uh, healthcare, I found that, um, you know, there was very little understanding of brain. Even today, it's the last big unknown when it comes to humans, when it comes yeah. to biology. You know, a brain weighs approximately 2 kg, mm -hmm. have... Um, you know, billions of uh, neurons and trillions of um, synapses. Those are the connectors between uh, neurons. And, uh, you know, we still do not know how uh, the brain truly functions. Brain also has a connection to computers because all the new innovations in computing came from our trying to think about how the brain would be functioning. So, for example, deep learning um, methodology, you know, neural networks, you know, these are all uh, things that uh, we got inspired from thinking about the brain. And the last part was also about the clinical aspect. You know, one of the, again, um, biggest social challenges that we face is as we age and we live longer, our brain, mental health problems increase. Our mm -hmm. brain doesn't keep up with, um, you know, the physical aspect of um, health and things like that. Mental health problems increase, memory loss happens, dementia sets in, and dementia is a global problem. So I felt that um, on the clinical side, I should support uh, research on Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, dementia, how does uh, the brain age and things like that. And on the computing side, can we create new models of computing? Uh, again, going back to our understanding of the brain. So that's what inspired me to look at healthcare and brain in particular. I have uh, supported this research at Indian Institute of Science and IIT Madras mm -hmm. and continue to support that also. How, where are we on that? I mean, how many years do you think we are into, uh, you know, finding something? For example, Alzheimer's, which is really, a, you, know, a, you know, almost without a, at this point uh, a solution. Um, but do you feel globally that we're on a path and, you know, is there a time frame that you could say, okay, in the next 10 years or 15 years, we should be, you know, cracking that uh, code open or is it still too early to tell? It's um, too early. Um, research is really uh, open-ended and this is a basic research, trying to understand what causes Alzheimer's, what causes uh, the brain to degrade and et cetera. And, Alzheimer's is also a very complex uh, disease mm -hmm. because it can have multiple causes. Having said that, um, what is fascinating is that um, with advances in computing, it has had impact on many other fields, including healthcare. 
So our ability to do DNA sequencing, understand uh, you know genetics better, understand microbiome and the gut uh, brain um, connection. Yeah. Right. Uh, understand um, how uh, we live in harmony with uh, other beings inside us. You know, we have trillion mm-hmm. cells in our body and we have trillion organisms in body also, bacteria, yeah. most of it in our small intestine. So, the, you know, this is, this is really fascinating. And with modern tools, we are able to understand uh, these things better. Mm-hmm. And that is what gives me hope that um, in the next uh, probably five, 10, maybe 15 years, a lot of these, um, what is called lifestyle diseases may uh, get uh, cures. Uh, so here I'm talking about, uh, you know, cancer, mm-hmm. uh, dementia and Alzheimer's, stroke, high blood pressure, diabetes. These are li- uh, called di- lifestyle diseases. And I'm hoping that uh, we will be able to find uh, cures for all these things, or at least uh, halt progress of the disease yes. so that we can you know, create a better quality of life for these individuals. Now, I think as part of, so when you fund startups, are most of those startups in healthcare or are you now? When you fund startups, you have, of course, a clear um, objective that they will become successful. They will return the money mm-hmm. to you. So this is the for-profit side of my family office. Yeah. And uh, here the expectation is that this will succeed. You know, this will succeed like what uh, we were able to do for Infosys. And we will mm-hmm. be able to create multiple successful enterprises. I fund um, in few areas, not just in healthcare, in digital commerce, in deep tech, in uh, financial services. So it's a broad spectrum yeah. of um, companies that I support. One through Axelor Ventures, which is our own uh, our own fund, but uh, I have investments uh, in other funds as well as directly into startups. And I believe that, um, you know, India is again uh, the hotbed for innovation because the opportunity to innovate exists. We have large number of problems. We have large talent pool. Today, we, these, these startups can get funding. So we have access to funds. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have access to technology. And so uh, I think it's um, probably the best um, ecosystem for um, innovation and entrepreneurship. And that's what I've seen in the last... Um, eight years from 2014 to now, we have become the third best uh, destination for entrepreneurship startups. We have more than 100 unicorns, you know, companies that are valued billion dollar plus. And many of these will become the future um, backbone for the industry, will become the future Infosys, et cetera. So now if a young Agastya child, for example, or boy or girl decided, you know, came up to you at some point, obviously at a later stage, What would you look for in them? I I suppose you must have, when you meet a new founder and a new entrepreneur, there's something you look for when they introduce themselves or get their first, you know, meeting with you. So yeah, as a roadmap for them to understand, you know, what is someone like you looking for? uh, What would you say? You know, I look for optimism. I look for uh, motivation. uh, I look for problem solving kind of attitude curiosity, willing to work very hard, willing to set aspirational goals and work hard towards it, is a team builder, somebody who can inspire others to join the cause. So these are the things that I would uh, look for. And I believe that um, children today are in a much better position uh, because when I talk to youngsters today, what I find is that um, uh, they don't have fear, they are confident. Mm-hmm. Uh, they feel that um, India is the right place to be in. We can conquer the world. Very different uh, attitude and very different um, uh, mindset. Uh, so it, it actually is inspiring. And today's, um, today's children you know, benefit from all the hard work that has already been done. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, the, the entire world is now uh, looking at India as a huge market looking at India for a source for talent, looking at India for uh, innovation. You know, there are about 400 plus uh, multinationals who have their R&D set up in India, which is uh, amazing. 
So they truly believe that India is the destination to look for when it comes to innovation, uh, when it comes to new products, new design, etc. But there is, and I think in one of your interviews, you had said that, you know, COVID has created a lot of uh, digital have-nots. How do you see IT, for example, playing a role in bridging that gap or otherwise, you know, bringing a lot of the kids that would otherwise maybe get left behind? Because as you correctly say, there's a lot of people knocking on our door. But uh, unless we educate, you know, the kids to the point where they can be, you know, employed or otherwise engaged in these activities, uh, there's a huge section that is still getting left behind. It's a, it's a challenge. It's an opportunity. You know, we have still a long way to go. We are still a what is called a low-income country mm -hmm. by capita income of two thousand dollars. You know, China is about ten thousand, or yeah. US is probably uh, you know much higher, twenty thousand plus. So we have a long way to go. You know, in terms of literacy, in terms of um, formal jobs, right? Ten percent of people are employed in formal uh, work. So mm -hmm. we have a long way to go. No question about it. But uh, what gives me optimism is that um, in the last 30 years, I've seen per capita income multiply five times. Yeah. Uh, I've seen uh, middle class go from about 50 million to about uh, 350 million, that's seven times. So I'm actually an optimist and changes, you know, you know no telephone to today, if you want, you can have multiple telephones and many yeah. people have multiple telephones, right? Uh, air travel becoming very affordable and cheap, you know, multiple choices when it comes to cars and things like that. We are the number one in the world in terms of two wheelers, manufacture of two wheelers. So, so many things have changed in my professional life. And I believe that it's accelerating and next 30 years are going to be even better. And uh, so I feel that, um, Yes, there are challenges, yes, there are problems, but we are in a better place, they are in a better position, and we have the talent, we have uh, access to technology, access to funding and money. And so it's now if we can focus, if we can work hard, if we can truly believe, and that's what is important, that self-belief, self mm -hmm. that uh, we can build a better India. And I feel that we have an opportunity to, create a new model for development. You know, yeah. the world today is faced with issues related to climate change, sustainability, disparity of incomes. You know, so many issues are there. You know, the, the COVID also told us that healthcare is broken, True. right? So we have an opportunity to create a better world. And this is what India is all about, creating a better model for the world better development model for the world, you know, one that is sustainable, affordable, equitable, uh, inclusive. Yep. Uh, and, and, and that's where I think we need to focus on. So, you know, yes, we can create self-driving cars, right? But can we create a better transport, um, transport infrastructure that's less polluting, maybe walk to work and things like that, redesign our cities. Yeah. So there are lots of things that we can do today because we are yet to develop. That creates a better model for us, a better um, place for all of us to live. That's what I look forward to. And that's what I hope our uh, uh, school kids and our college kids today will build a better nice. India. Now, where do you see Agastya in the current education ecosystem? Uh, what role do you see it playing? Where do you see it triumphing? And where do you see, you know, where we could definitely maybe do more or, you know, what gaps are being left behind? And I know you've, you've had some experience and I think you've interacted with Ramji on uh, uh, a number of occasions in terms of what's happening. So how, how do you see it from your point of view? See, Agastya is building a model and, uh, and demonstrating a different okay. way of... Um, uh, educating the kids, you know, um, by uh, looking at in curiosity, problem solving, uh, learning by doing, uh, things like that. But I believe that uh, in order for the change to scale up, the change to impact the entire country, uh, we need to work together to build the uh, public schools, the government mm -hmm. schools, uh, which is where a lot of children go to. I am a product of government schools. You know, all through my life, from 
nursery to my uh, mtech i studied in government institutions and that's where uh, middle class lower middle class poor kids go to so unless we uh, change the entire educational system agastya is a model that can be looked at there are other models also mm -hmm. so we need to take the best of these and and start changing our educational system and then i hope we can uh, we can make a transformed india so that's what we need to do agastya and its uh, success i think needs to be now replicated yeah. needs to be scaled up needs to be brought to the public school system that uh, touches everybody in True. india today so chris before i let you go we have a little bit of time left and if you're okay to it i have a few rapid fire questions which sure. again are uh, as i showed you initially are nothing too crazy but at the same time it'd be uh, nice so question one is one thing you wish someone had told you when you were 15 years old you know the world would change so much in the last uh, 30 40 years i never imagined uh, <laughs> that change could be happening in my life uh, i was lucky uh, you know i'm where i am today uh, but um, i don't know whether we could have predicted today i think uh, we have better tools for uh, thinking about the future or maybe we have access to more yeah. information because of internet and things like that but those were days where you know we didn't have phone we didn't have internet and and the news would come uh, uh, probably by you know reading the newspaper which comes you know every day morning etc so your knowledge about what is happening around the world was very limited Mm -hmm. um so i wish uh, you know some of these were available those days <laughs> uh, but uh, i'm happy where we are today question 2 is one person from history you would like to spend a day with living or dead just someone if you could just uh, uh, even bring someone back just for one day so you could learn from them who who would that be so clearly you know it's inspirational to read stories about india's uh, independence struggle mm -hmm. and there have been lot of um, you know leaders who participated who fought uh, for india's independence uh, mm -hmm. of course mahatma gandhi ji's um, name comes to mind but more importantly you know that zeal uh, to uh, create an independent country through non violent means uh, through sacrifice i feel that uh, zeal must come back yeah. um, because yes many people have become better become uh, middle income you know have a wonderful career wonderful mm -hmm. life but there are many many who have not made it yet and so we need to think about a struggle to transform india to a middle income country i feel really that uh, we don't have sufficient number of people working hard towards that mm -hmm. you know it's it's the world has become a lot more self centered individuals organizations countries you know something i wish uh, people can experience today so uh, yeah so if i was or if you were going to outer space or to a desert island one book that you would take and not a book on survival obviously i assume that <laughs> <laughs> you know you see for me the you know i told you i read a lot and things like that uh, so i pick a subject and read um, you know couple of books or three four books uh, on on that subject um uh, of late uh, i've been reading a lot about uh, the whole concept of web3 and things like that so that's my current uh, uh, interest uh, i try to read on more technology related subjects nowadays and if i read anything um, which is fiction you know things like courtroom dramas like john grisham's books uh things like that. so you know again uh, there's no one book uh, which i keep by my side always it's um, what interests me at that point of time so if i get to a desert you know i would say let me get three four books of the same subject so that i can you know get different perspectives and go deep into it there's 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 a nugget of uh, i think inspiration there for anyone to say that okay even if you're headed somewhere 
remote and with nothing else, at least strive for excellence in one thing. I think that's what, try to learn in a very true thing. sense, is what you, yeah. Try to learn. See, I, uh, think... I have to read for one hour every day. If I don't, I feel I'm actually lagging. There's so much happening around you. Yeah. And, and so taken some subjects on which I read, healthcare, brain, mm -hmm. computers, of course, you know, so I pick and choose subjects and then I read everything in those subjects and at a time concentrate on one aspect. Two more questions. One is an idea you wish that you had had first. So people ask, right, um, Infos is a services company, right? Mm -hmm. uh, why not a product company? Then um, uh, the products themselves have become services. And I wish um, uh, we had thought about um, uh, internet, etc. even um, uh, or on par with anybody else. So, you know, there are things which um, we could have done better. Uh, we, we did one thing very well and we have become the best in the world for that, which mm -hmm. is IT services. Yeah. But there are other things that we did not uh, do on par with the rest of the world. So we missed those buses. Uh, but today, that's why I'm trying to look up uh, Web3, right? Uh, can we, if this is the next wave, can we mm -hmm. actually be on par or, or lead the world? Uh, on brain sciences, can we lead the world? Because everybody is uh, on par with each other. You know? There's nobody who has really, really done remarkably well. So you know, I, I, my advice to you today, children today, is identify these trends, ride the wave. Because if you ride the wave, the wave will push you forward and, and be the first to actually surf the wave and and uh, yes it is risky but uh, you know you will be you will be ahead of others so my last question is well and i know you're way into health so maybe that's the answer here but the biggest problem that you think needs to be solved right now like you know if an answer could be got tomorrow it wouldn't be too soon well something that all of us can do today our spending on healthcare is uh, episodical when we fall sick, we think about healthcare, we think about doctor, we think about hospital, but it's a wrong thing. Mm -hmm. I feel that we should think about health every single day. We should be healthy always. We should you know, build our immune system uh, always. We should eat right, we should exercise, you know, we should meditate. Uh, I think this is something that everybody can do, right? And shifting the focus from uh, curative to preventive. Today, the entire healthcare system is focused on cure and mm -hmm. curative side of healthcare. But I think we should be focused on preventive. And that's what I would say from an individual perspective also. And that kind of um, aha moment came um, only in the last 15 years for myself yeah. even. You know, I was not uh, that much conscious, but as I age, I suddenly realized that um, you know, I need to be healthy. And then that means investing time every single day to do some exercise, to try and eat right and things like that. Excellent, sir. Well, thank you so much. Uh, you know, I know you're extremely busy. So an hour of your time is honestly, it's, it's worth its weight in gold. And you've given us that. And I really can't, uh, I can't express my gratitude for it. No, um, thank you for, thank you for uh, doing this. And hopefully, you know, you will, uh, do such interviews 30 years from now and somebody else will be on the other <laughs> side <laughs> having been you know successful and transforming india we look forward to it hopefully an agastya kid and that would be yes. that would make definitely us very an proud agastya kid. <laughs> definitely an agastya kid